Hi, uh, we are going to start the module three, which is on the concentration. And let me begin this module with the solvation. Before we will talk about the solvation, we need to understand the meanings of the terms of the solution, solvent and the solute. The solution is made by the mixture of the solvent and the solute. What is a solvent and what is a solute? The solvent, we, we normally have an idea in our minds saying the solvent have to be always the liquid. No, that is not how we define a solvent. Solvent is the component which has more uh, components. More uh, like if we talk in chemistry, we always talk about the amount in moles. So in the uh, system of the solution, we have solvent in uh, with la uh, uh, higher amounts of moles. The solute is the less abundant or the uh, one with having the uh, uh, the few or the uh, lower amount of moles. So the solvent brings the more, the solute brings the less. As an example, if you look at this uh, table and you'll see different types of solutions, as an example, this here the gas is the solute and the solvent is the sol solid. So how do we define that solution? H2 gas in palladium. Oh, just like in uh, the uh, whatever the salt water. So, so salt is the solid and the water is the liquid. And now we define that as the salt water. Salt in water, that solution is the salt water. Oh, again, uh, here, the mercury is the solute, which is actually a liquid. And the silver is the solvent, which is actually a solid. And we define that solution as mercury in silver like that the solvent doesn't have to be a liquid always the solvent is the one with the larger amount the solute is the uh, with uh, with the uh, smaller amount that is how we define a solvent and a solute combining the sol solute and the solvent it makes a homogeneous mixture. That homogeneous mixture is known as the solution. How a solution is going to be made? Yes, we there are two driving forces behind the process of making a solution. The disordering or the randomizing in thermodynamics, we call this the uh, factor as the entropy. Under thermodynamics, we will talk about this, the entropy later. And the other one is the intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces play an important role in the process of making a solution. Types of solutions. We will talk about three different types of solutions. Saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated. In a saturated solution, the maximum amount of solute is dissolved. That is the saturated solution. In an unsaturated solution, the we can dissolve more solute. This is an unsaturated. We can dissolve more solid, and that will uh, uh, perfectly dissolve in the solvent. In a saturated solution, 
We cannot dissolve any more solute. That's the maximum. If we try to add more, then that will deposit at the bottom. In a super saturated solution, it was already saturated. We see some undissolved solute in the solvent. That is a super saturated solution. How intermolecular forces place or make the solution? We need to talk about what is solvation. Yes, the solvation is the process or oh, during the solvation, when the solute dissolve in the solvent, the solute molecules disperse and the solute molecules will be surrounded by the solvent molecules. That process is known as the solvation. This solvation process is determined by the solute solute interactions. How well this solute Molecules can be easily easy, can be easily dispersed or can be easily isolated like that. And the solvent solvent interactions. Because the interactions of the solvent solvent must be uh, broken and then they'll come make the new in interactions with the solute molecules. The solute solvent interactions that the intermolecular uh, force the uh, at, uh, making those or breaking new uh, breaking intermolecular forces and those making of new intermolecular process forces are explained in this energy chart this is the solute first it is the intermolecular forces are broken and make it separated then the here the solvent and solvent molecules are separated and now you will see the dispersed mixtures of the separated solute and the separated solvent then they'll two mix together and make this solution this is if this is the delta h1 breaking the intermolecular forces always an endothermic process again dispersing the solvent molecules Again, breaking the intermolecular forces, endothermic, <coughs> and making new intermolecular forces is an exothermic process. The delta H, the enthalpy of solvation, is a collection, is an addition of all three energy processes, delta H1, delta H2, and the delta H3. Uh, if the delta H uh, sol solvation is less than zero, the entire process is exothermic one. Delta H solution is, if it is greater than zero, then the net energy is an endothermic. When uh, we say, what, here is another term that we should be familiar with. Uh, when the two liquids, when the solvent and solute is completely mixed, we say it is miscible. So, just think, uh, think, uh, uh, review this. The delta H solution is the uh, addition of delta H1, H2, and delta H3. Always delta H1 and delta H2 must be uh, endothermic processes and delta H3 is an exothermic process because it is in it involves making new interactions. Making the new solute solvent interactions. Your turn. Determine for each solute whether the solubility will be greater in water, which is polar, what is a polar solvent, or in benzene. Benzene is a non-polar solvent. What are those solutes? Bromine, sodium iodide, carbon tetrachloride, and formaldehyde. How we will, how we can get the answer? Yes, we will 
stay with this like this all like rule. That means if the, we are talking about two substances and if those two substances with similar type of intermolecular forces and the magnitude, then they are likely to be soluble. Otherwise, they would not be soluble. Right. So let's look at the uh, the uh, brom bromine is a um, <coughs> nonpolar. So it is soluble in benzene. Like that, you will get the answers for this question. 